Hello, Internet. Uh, we're back here at McMurray Hatchery. Uh, we're in the front office. We got some little baby chickies here. Um, I don't know, we got a little, little brooder set up here. We're going to just talk about some of our brooder options, um, some feed options, talk about some, some chickies. So when you get them from the mail or pick them up here, that'd be, what do you do with them? So I'm going to start put them down here. So I've got two different heating plate brooders set up. So these are radiant heat brooders. Um, there's two different options we have. And this one does come in a larger size than this one as well. This is the only option with this one. Um, but they're, you know, compared to a heat bulb, these are, it's a hot plate. So it'd be more like a mother hen. So this is, would be um, where the chicks would go under to get warm. So they don't, they need to touch the plate. So they need to be set at a height where the chicks can get under it. Um, you're gonna see that it's not, it's not, they don't get, Hot, you know, a, a heat bulb is, you know, 250 watt bulb. You know, you're you're trying to heat a space with that bulb that's between you know 95 degrees basically for these chicks. These don't get hot. They're not hot to the touch. They're not. There's no there's no fire hazard. You know, and you see our our, our bedding. They're right on the bedding. Um, they're not they're not creating that that hot spot that hot space that uh, like a heat bulb would be. So um, one thing to mention with these is is they're not really for outside brooding. You know, if you're putting them out in the chicken coop to brood, they need to be in an area that's about 50 degrees or warmer. Um, as we're in our office, it's probably 70 in here, 72. Um, a little guy, a little gold Polish. So, you know, he just hatched this morning. It's hatch day here. So, we're just, I don't know, we're just letting them go. I like to dip them, they can find water. A little uh, Americana. You can tell by how fluffy his cheeks are. Look at his little beard. Um, that blue, little blue Andalusian. Another little blue Andalusian. Whoop, find that water. So they were hatched this morning, so this is their, this is their, their little home, this is life. We'll find some stuff. couple buff Orpingtons. Um, one of the things, you know, we, we talk about is, is what is a good chick to start with? If you don't, you know, if you don't know, um, you know, these are all great, great breeds. Buff Orpingtons are really, you know, really good bird for about any climate. Um, black Copper Moran here, so that's a really nice dark chocolate egg. Another little Polish, so white crested black Polish. Another little Polish. White Polish. So yeah, they're just this is their little home for now. So these these heat plates, they're pretty warm. Um, they're kind of figuring it out. Give them the option. You want to set these plates so that the height is a little bit small so that they can touch the plate. What's nice about this one is it's super easy to adjust. You just turn these things, bring it down a little bit. I like this, this Brincia one. Uh, it's got a longer cord, so when you go to plug it in, it's you can get farther away. I mean, it's probably 10 feet long, so that's, that's kind of nice. This one's a little bit short. It's only about three feet long. Let's put you in there. See, they're taking, taking to the water right away. You know, they'll, this little guy's drinking right here. You can see it. I used, I didn't use cold water. I used, I didn't use hot water either. I just used kind of a, you know, room temp water. I, I didn't want to chill the birds with cold water. But they don't really like warm water either. So... So these hatched this morning, so this is their, their first drink. I don't know if you see, they're already sleeping. They're pretty cozy under there. They like to be able to touch, they need to be able to touch the top of that plate. So they're, they're getting that radiant heat that was 
be like a mother hen. You know, the mother hen would be sitting on them. So they seem to like the yellow one. I was curious. Do a little color comparison. Uh, chickens are naturally attracted to bright colors, anything shiny. So they do they do like that. You're still gonna want to keep a light on um, for that first day, especially. You're gonna want to keep a light on. You know, it, it could be a night light, but any kind of light for for that full 24 hours. Um, you'll start. You could start shutting it off. You know, if you can do a daylight, you know, where it fades, you know, something, but. Day and night? Yeah, a day and night kind of sequence. So, yeah, that first couple of days, you just, they need to have pretty much constant light. They're like babies. They'll sleep a lot, but they don't ever have a cycle, per se. Um, one thing I like is when, when you got new chicks, baby chicks, I like just a flat, open feeder. Um, just something so it's as easy to get to as possible. Um, they don't, same with water, they need to have really easy access. So foolproof, they have no problem just standing in it. This is some of our organic chick starter. Um, you see it's, it's ground up real nice for them. So this is milled right here in Webster City. So it's local. Um, yeah, easy access to food. So I don't, it doesn't matter if they're standing in it. Um, some of the, it's good if they poop in it a little bit. <laughs> um, they, part of chickens building their, their gut biome is, is really scratching and ingesting their, you know, their own feces at, at certain times in their life. So it helps to build, build their, the bacteria in their intestines if they can, so, I mean, a little bit. They don't need to be covered in it, but <laughs> it's healthy for them. Um, you see, this guy's kind of loud. You know, they're all they're always gonna make some kind of noise. But ooh, that was a good one. What'd you eat there, buddy? These ones here, they're they're really quiet. You know, they're comfortable, making little happy cheeping noises. You know, he's not exactly sure what's going on. Let's get him somewhere warm. See how they quiet down? Like those are happy chicken noises. They're always gonna be cheeping and stuff, but that's that's how you know how they're comfortable. This is just quiet. Um, you'll know it, they'll get loud, whether they're out of food or out of water, they're too hot or they're too cold. They can get too hot, so they should be able to move in and out and away from their heat source. So they're gonna get in there, they're gonna get all warm, sitting in front of that ro roaring fire. And then they're gonna get too hot. And then they're gonna have to go out and move around. So. Little happy chicken noises. Cheep, 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 cheep. This feeder, this feeder does come with a whole top thing. Uh, I'll use that after a certain amount of time. Because uh, you can't just keep enough feed in there for your number of chicks. This, I'll talk about the number of chicks. So these will do 15 to 20 chicks each. Um, they'll spend time in there, you know, not all of them will fit at one time, but they'll, they come in and out, you know, they move around constantly. Um, they kind of, they pack themselves in there pretty tight. But that's about how many they do. There is a bigger model of this um, that'll do up to 50. I mean, it's pretty good size. It's Double that size. Yeah, at least double that, if not not a little bit bigger than that. Um, so you get, you know, if you, depends on how many birds you, you, you'll need. You'll need a few more. Like a heat lamp, you know, a heat lamp and a brooder set up kind of this size. Ooh, you know, one heat there. lamp would be be plenty sufficient. It would heat enough space for them to, to do. These are our reusable brooder panels. They're just corrugated plastic, um, super easy to wash. Really convenient to move around, fold away. Yeah. Always wash your stuff between brooding. Um, always. Put these all together. <laughs> yeah. So this makes a nice ring. You could get, I mean, you can get a number of birds. As the birds grow, you might need more space. Um, you can always buy two of these. Make it twice as big.
And you can hook them together here. Yep, so they're just little plastic rings. There's more rings uh, to hook them. Yep. So this, you can double this. This particular one does come with a, a hanger for a heat lamp if you wanted to hang the heat lamp. Or, you know, if you, if you get the starter kit, depending on which starter kit, it'll either come with the lamp and these rings. And uh, if you get the, the premium kit, it'll come with the electric plate brooder. Uh, oh, the platinum kit. The platinum yeah. kit. The premium uh, comes kit with has the, a light. Yep, yeah, comes with, you know, a food water container. Comes, uh, the platinum kit will come with some of our organic feed. Everything but the bedding. You need some kind of, of material. Uh, I don't recommend newspaper. It's very slick, especially it'll, it'll get wet. You know, they'll drip from their water. There'll be manure and they can hurt their legs doing that. So I don't really recommend newspaper. Um, some kind of shavings, fine shavings are about $4 a bag. You can't, gone already. But, so, you know, and that'll last you a long time. And then when you're done with that, you compost it and you put it on your garden. So it's just win-win. It's about time to clean my coop out at home. It's been a long winter. The bedding right here is Excelsior bedding. So this is the these sheets are what we put in the bottom of our our baskets. So this is or our, you know, our, our mailing thing. So this mm -hmm. is Excelsior pad. It's just woven straw. Um, it provides really nice footing, pretty even. Um, but if you want a brooder, you kind of want you want pine shavings, not cedar, not right? Not cedar shavings, yeah, because they'll they'll try to eat the cedar and oil and, and the cedar chips is not good for any animals really. So pine pine's best. Um, and you want like I I go with the large flake bedding. Yeah, um, I, do I don't too. like the small or the medium. It's just like powder. It's like sawdust, and they'll eat that, and because it looks just like food, it doesn't absorb as well. I like the large flake bedding. Um, that's what we use in all of our barns. That's what I use at home. There's a little happy, happy little chickens down there. They are sound asleep. Well, they had a rough. I mean, they they just hatched this morning, so they have tough being born. Someone wants to know how warm it is under here. So it's hard to judge because it's not, it's radiant heat, so it is not warming up. The, it warms up the chickens and the surface, but it won't warm the air temperature, so it's hard to gauge. Right. Um, it's but not, I can put my hand on yeah, it. It is not hot to the touch. It is, it is warm, but, um, you know, it's like the sunshine. The sun doesn't warm up the air temperature. It warms up the things around it. So this I mean it's it technically it's, technically it's room temperature. The difference is is this one is 12 um, 12 volts. They're not 12. No, it's not. It is 12 volt, but it's got a little inverter on it. Um, I'm saying that wrong. It's 12 watts. Yeah, I heard the wrong right conversion there. So this is 12 watts, and this is 25 watts. So. Uh, you know, if you think about a light bulb, you know, even a 60 watt light bulb, you know, incandescent or, or the, the heat bulbs are 250 watts. So this is 10 times less power consumption. And this one is even half of that one. Um, that one is warmer. So. Much warmer. Yeah, it is. So it's even, I think it's got a little thinner plastic than this. I think this plastic is a little bit thicker than um, it feels like, but. So they're in there, they're cozy. Yeah. Um, it's hard to measure the temperature because it's not warming the air temperature. I had a thermometer, but it didn't change. We can try and put it under there. No. It's saying it's 60, but I know it's at least 72 in here because we have the heat on all year round. Because that's what the office staff likes. <laughs> and I like these new legs on the Brincy one because you can adjust it. Yeah, it's super easy to adjust that one. I mean, this one isn't hard either. It's this just, one you, you can just up, you know. raise it up, raise it down, and you can put that one at an angle. Yeah, I do like that it goes at an angle. 
Um, you know, chicks are different sizes too. You'll have some chicks that are bigger than others. Um, you know, those Polish are, are on the smaller side of some of the breeds. Um, you know, Andalusians are, are smaller than our the Americanas, yeah. you know, as chicks. What? What? I had this under there. It's saying it's already 70 under there. Oh. By touching that. It's probably warmer. It's probably warmer. Yeah, so this is, I mean, this is it. So then you stand here and you watch your chickens for long, too long. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's good to check on them. I mean, obviously, I, you know, when I'm starting chicks, I don't check them as often as I could uh, because I've got to go to work like most people. Um, you don't ever want them to run out of water. They shouldn't run out of feed. Um, you know, it's okay to run out of, feed to a point um, but if they're if you put feed down and they're like swarming that feeder then they are too hungry um, you know they should have you know feed pretty much constantly while they're growing so that's just thing and water always have fresh clean water because they'll I like these little the little rings there are some that are a little bit bigger and wider this is foolproof they get their beaks down there, but they'll you will need a bigger one as they grow because they're not gonna be able to get down into that. That's like a quail size, which I love for baby chicks. Yeah. But for about two weeks, and then you need the bigger, bigger version. But then at that point, I'm not worried about them falling in. Um, after about two weeks, this is a quart. You're gonna need to fill that up probably two to three times a day. Um, you'll go to a gallon. Or two gallon, depending on. Then that gallon one, at that point, you're going to need to fill two, three times a day. Um, so it depends on how often you can check on them, be around them. What? That's a quart gallon, and then you'll go to a, you know whatever your kind of basic watering system is going to be, whether it be a you know a bowl water or tripod. You know if you're just going to do uh, plastic or galvanized waters, you know two, three, four gallon, eight gallon. Whatever watering system. If you if you do transition them to nipples, anytime you change their waterer, take some chicks or chickens and make sure it hit their beak on it, so they know like that's the water right. now. Um, you need a couple of you know kind of guide chickens to to show the other ones what to do. You know, don't assume that they're going to be able to figure out. You know, go from a a bowl water to a to nipples because that they they won't. They need to know that that is the water now. Um, so just a little bit of training. I do that every day. And then you know. leave that one in for a while till they're used to the nipple yeah, water. Or until you can see them using that one for sure. So using whatever the newest one is. Um, Someone had a question in here um, about the sale. Oh yeah, twenty right. percent off today. Right. Starter kits. It's gonna it's gonna run out today. So. 20% off starter kits. That's the best deal of the year. And that, if you do the platinum one, that's actually the includes this. The platinum comes, comes with this one, yep. Um, the premium and the platinum both come with this uh, Bruder ring. The, our, our standard starter kit comes with a corrugated cardboard ring. Mm -hmm. um, works really well, too. It's not quite as tall, so I think that you run out of time faster. Like, they'll, because they can jump. <laughs> So once they get feathers, yeah, um, you know, it depends. You know, when we had chickens running around our basement, <laughs> my wife does not know how to appreciate that. Little feisty guy there. Um, you know, I needed something that could keep them in a little bit longer because, hey, yeah, come see everybody. That's a blue Andalusian. I, I love the color blue in poultry. I love Andalusians, they're one of the really stunning, stunning breeds. Uh, white egg layer. Everybody needs some white egg layers, though. They lay a nice, you know, large to medium-sized egg. You know, they're not really eating, but that's, you know, when their chicks are hatched, they they envelop the yolk, so they really have a full stomach yet. So they're. That's how we can ship them. Yeah, that's why we're able to put them in put them in the post office, just because they they envelop that yolk. So they're just happy. They're just staying warm, checking stuff out, learning about the world.
I like both of these. Um, they both have lights on on lights, so I mean, a quick visual tells you that yes, they're both plugged in. This one's a little bit harder to see because it's orange on orange plastic, but so that's that's chickens prefer that one. <laughs> Um, super efficient, I mean, because you're not heating all the, the air in the space, so you're really only heating the bird and directly below them. So and how long do they eggs. need chick starter feed? Um, I like to run starter for six to eight weeks. So this is our, our organic chick starter. Um, it's, it's in there. I happen to have some bags we were, we were taking photos of. Um, you can see the, you know, the cracked corn. It's ground up pretty fine uh, for the chicks. To Is this the starter? Up. Yep. Um, oh, this is the... oh, that's layer. This was the starter because I put some in the thing. Yeah. So it's about the same. Um, the layer has would, would have oyster shell in there. Ooh. And this is milled right here. Yep, Grand Wipe City. So it's local, it's fresh. We we make it to order typically so we don't keep it on hand too long. <coughs> Excuse me. Um yeah, you'll keep them on on a starter for six, six to eight weeks and then you go to a grower, which would have just a little bit less protein. Um and you'll do that basically until they start laying or getting close to production about that 16 18 weeks and then you'll move them to a layer um, if you can find it a lot of a lot of them are grower starters is kind of one thing so sometimes it's it's just one so you don't really change them off of the starter grower um, until they turn into a layer I like what's called a pullet layer so it's a high protein but it's a high amino acid layer because when the chicks start to get into egg production they're still not really full-size birds yet um, you know they'll start laying you know at 18 19 weeks some of them some of you know, some are a little bit slower um, but they're really not fully grown until they're after a year old um, you know a pullet is anything less than a year you know a hen is is a year old and the same thing with a, you know a cock is is a year plus and a cock roll is under a year so their their bodies aren't even full size yet so um, the pullet layer is, is, is got that, um, it's about the same protein, but it has a high amino acid content that helps them absorb more so their body continues to grow as they're, as they're in production, egg production. So um, if you can find that, it is kind of tough to find, but always check your, your counts. Every, every bag of feed has got a... Uh, count and you'll know, have a crude protein minimum and maximum. It'll have fat um, content, salt content, and it'll have your amino acids, your lysines, your thiazines, and your tysines. And your I made that last two up, but <laughs> it's Other in there. Scenes. Yeah. Um, so it's super important that you know as as they get into production, not only you have a layer feed um, with with the eggshell or the oyster shell for eggs um, enough calcium in it that but they also need you know a little protein and amino acids they're just sleeping they're just happy little happy chicken noises we still have some birds available. We're hatching today. Um, give us a call. So then, unless you're in like Memphis right now, where you're getting flooded on, you don't don't call them. <laughs> you should be building an ark, I think. Yeah. Um, We're shipping twice a week. Twice a week. Yep. Yeah. Mondays and Tuesdays are our, our hatch days, so things go out both those days. And then April 1st starts 
April Lower 1st starts our, yeah, our new six minimums. So we'll do down to six. Um, right now it's 25. So everyone needs 25 layers because that's, that's about what I have at home. And I get 18, 19 eggs a day. That's, that's enough eggs that I have people to give them to. Like, <laughs> um, what breeds do you have at home? Oh, I have a buttercup and a turkin. Buff Cochins and uh, Speckled Sussex. Those are those ones started laying really early. And then I have, I have some of my older ones. I have Americanas and Whiting Blues and Whiting Greens. And I have Sussex. Silkies. Yeah. And a Millie Fleur Rooster. And a Porcelain Rooster. And a Sultan <laughs> Rooster. A Sultan Rooster. A lot of roosters right now. Um, I have some light Brahma hens and um, Favreau rooster. So, yeah, Sam the Favreau. He's nice. He's pretty nice. Gordo. Yeah, and I'll probably end up with I don't know how many are there. One, two, three, eight, eight more. <laughs> are we all converted over to the new style of these Brincy eco gloves? Yes, I believe so. Okay, so Martha the. The pre the platinum kit will come with the newest eco glow. Yeah, I think we're We don't have any of the older ones left. Unless we do. But I don't think so. No, I only saw the new back yeah, then. Yeah, I think it's just the new This is it. This is all you got to do. I mean, starting chickens is so simple. Food, water, a little heat, place to be out. Uh, you know, no big drafts. Um. I probably wouldn't start them in my chicken coop now, um, but I would do it later. Like it's just like it's Wednesday just cold supposed here. to be negative one for a high, so um, it's just probably it's just too cold for that. Really, I mean, they could do it, but you know. So if you have a you know, another heated space, I've done it in my garage all winter long, which isn't heated, but it is you know attached to the house, so it stays warmer than my chicken. <laughs> um, you know, I've done it in my basement, which it works out. Um, you know, then later in the year, I will start things in my chicken coop. You know, I have a little partition that I'll, I'll start my birds opposite my, my full-size birds. But um, I do have two chicken coops if I had to. I'm gonna build another one this year. I might have three. Um, but um, boom, boom. Let's show them those books. Okay, so yeah, it, uh, with the starter, the platinum starter kit, you get you get two books. Um, Stories Guide to Raising Chickens. So this is pretty helpful. Um, Gail Damro's written a ton of books about chickens, so it's got a lot of info on on basically you know this just this stuff. So it includes later in life stuff. It includes you know pest management, disease management. Uh, chicken health handbook. Chickens have diseases, like I say that, but like there's a lot of things. Like your kids get sick, you know. Once your kids start school, they come home with every cold and flu bug and thing. It's not any different for chickens, you know. They get colds, they get flus. Um, they get hurt. They yeah, they'll get hurt, you know. They'll stub their toe and they get a sliver. Like they can't get their sliver out themselves. So um, things to do. Uh, Triage. Yeah, <laughs> it's. You know, even sometimes it's preventative health care. Like, what do you do? You know, I worm my birds once a year regardless of, you know, if they need it or not. You know, providing a dust bath so they can, um, you know, that's how they take care of lice and mice and stuff. So, you know, how to best do that. You know, they normally dig in the dirt. Um, it just, and it, this, this one has stuff to do for, even if you're in, like, urban areas, um, you know, best case or best use practices for all of that so yeah two really handy books that come with the come with the starter kit um, one thing that we ship with the starter kits is quick check so this is I talked about a little bit like that pullet feed kit so this is you know Gatorade for chickens it's it's uh, you know vitamins and, and potassium sodium riboflavin vitamins A D E um, it's got a lot of 
Uh, it's got some probiotics and stuff in it. It's all organic. It is organic certified. So it uh, you just mix this in with their water. You can put it in their food too, but you mix like a teaspoon in with your water and uh, it helps them get off to, to a really good start. If your chicks had a kind of rough shipment and you didn't get quick chick, um, sugar, feed them sugar water sugar. or honey water, you know, get Pure them. syrup. Yeah, get them some kind of sugar that'll give them a little pep um, or some quick chick. <laughs> mm -hmm. This does, I don't even know how many gallons it does. It's a lot. One teaspoon per gallon. So for this amount of chicks, so, that'll last quite a yeah, while. You, you, I've, I've done it, so we'll all put it in with, uh, we'll put a little, little dab in with each, each water fill. It'll last you several weeks. Um, you can mix it with their food, and sometimes if uh, if your birds are stressed, like if it's super hot out or super cold out, I like to mix in quick chick too, and uh, and just kind of give them. See, they like they like both of them. Oh, they're going under this one now. Just checking it out. Um, if you move birds, you know they get they can get stressed. So, you know, anytime you, you do something, I like to put quick chick in, um, kind of help them. Stress, stress is not only bad for people, it's bad for chickens. So, <laughs> you know, part of, part of a healthy chicken diet is, is stress-free, so. Well, and they burn calories when they're stressed. Mm -hmm. So that's why the sugar and the electrolyte lights helps them. A little Polish. White crested black Polish. He's gonna have that huge, huge top knot. Boop. He's nice and warm. I can feel how warm he is. See, uh, see how happy this almost, one is. He's almost sound asleep. No noise. Like even when they're up and active and cheeping, you know, it's still comfortable. They'll be able to tell you. That's the number one. Chickens, you'll know it when they're when something's wrong. So just watch them. Clean water, good food, a little happy, warm shelter. That's it. And a little chicken paradise. It's easy. It is. It is easy. <laughs> And this one's face down, sleeping. Sound asleep. All right, should okay. we let them sleep? Yeah, we're gonna let them let them be. That's about all we have today. Starter kits are on sale, so check those out. You get things you see here, everything you need to do to start your chicks off. Um, if you have questions, you give chicks, us a call. You know, that's it. Pick out your chicks. So get your Andalusians, your black cop and rams, and your uh, Americanas and buff orbs. And buff orpingtons. It's your whole range of basket there. That's that's your egg egg basket. That's a colorful rainbow right there. That's all you need. So yeah, I don't know. Sign it off now. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We'll Everybody see have... everybody again next week. Yeah, we'll do something else. All right. See everybody next week.